All right, we got a fun project today. We are draining the blue handled clear gas ethanol free out of my out of my F250 <laughs> turbo diesel power stroke. Cuz my 16 year old decided that the blue pump would be uh the blue handle would be just the same as the green handle that says diesel so on this 2014 f-250 i had to take this off because it wouldn't the hose wouldn't thread down kick across and make a 90 degree and go straight in i just couldn't jiggle it around enough so i had to take off this this guy this guy which is going to be tricky to get back on just to give myself a little more space so i could jiggle it around and get that in there and then i bought this 20 dollar pump so i didn't have to suck the gas out and this pumped really well it got it flowing pretty strong so and we're going to pump all this crap gas out. This is about 10 gallons now. I think there's 10 more to go. If I can get that, if it'll keep pumping well. So. And then I'm going to, I know I, I'm just trying to do my own version of fixing this instead of taking it to mechanic. Which might be a big mistake, but multiple people now, including the mechanic down the road, suggested this. I, mean, I bought a new fuel filter and I drained that all out. Fill this full of diesel and let it run and just see if it, it takes care of itself. <clears throat> and then I might replace the fuel filter again. But whoever watches this is going to be like, you're an idiot. You should have done this or that, but... I read and read and read and then talked to two people that had this happen and they're doing what I'm doing. They did what I'm doing and it worked for them. So we'll see how it goes. All right, I got that tank drained and the lines all put back together. Now I'm gonna start with the fuel filter. And if I remember right, it's right there. This guy. So you're, we're just gonna use we're gonna unclip this. This uh, sensor. I'm breaking that. Set that over there. And then this is the drain. all that junk fuel out of there and then we'll use a 32 inch dealio to crank this entire housing it just rotates off and the filter sit the cylinder filter sits inside of it take the old one out put the new one in put a new o-ring on and then screw this all back up into place and it goes it, it sits just right. You can look at a bunch of videos, but it's pretty easy. And the other half of the filter system is up in the cab. I'll show you that in a minute. All right, so we got that housing off. Here's the new filter. And it goes, just squeezes down in there. I'm gonna wipe it out a little bit and then pop that in there. And I'm gonna screw that unit back on. Pretty easy. And there's better videos with more details on there, but there's a two parts to this fuel filter on a, I have a 2014 F-250, um, <clears throat> 6.7 liter. So this is the second unit. And uh, it's supposed to drop in and then rotate over so that that little thing on the bottom catches. My memory is when I did this last time, 
I had to shave off that. I don't remember if I had to shave off the bottom because it just wasn't grabbing correctly. And I had to really work it down in there. It's supposed to drop in, point it that way, and then just quarter turn so it's facing the way it is. But I couldn't get it. I couldn't get it to do that to fit into the housing slot for that thing. And it's so snug in there. I was like, Psh. in fact, I, re I think I remember now I had to grease that up just to get it down into the housing. Anyway. <clears throat> These just pop off. This green piece just pops straight up. And uh, then this is a squeeze deal. You squeeze it and pull it off. This pops straight up and then it shimmies off and those just sit back. There's no pressure in the lines. So it just drips a bit. And then you just put them back on with the new one in place. <clears throat> and you're good to go. That was a pain to get out. And I do see that I shaved off that knob on the side. I left the bottom on, but um, I see I saw another video it just drops in, slides over, but my housing, there's no way on earth. I remember from last time, I was just like, what is this? And uh, so I'm gonna go in and shave the little knob off the side there. This guy. That on there, because it, it sits so snug down in there, it's not gonna come out. And there's so much, so much of this, it's not gonna bounce. It doesn't sit in there loose at all, so. <clears throat> all right, so I just took my grinder to it, ground it smooth. So. If I remember right, I had to lube up this housing just to get it in there, which I don't understand based on the other videos I've seen. Well, I've seen one other video, two, where they did this and it, theirs, they just dropped it in and rotated it. And Anyway, a little lube and it'll get down in there. It was a pain to get the old one out. I had to use a big old uh, pipe wrench, not pipe wrench, uh, channel locks, big channel locks and just kind of work at it and crank on it and work at it and crank on it these guys right there get it out and as you can see i in the process i snapped off on the old one getting it out one of these so hopefully this just goes right this in this one just popped right into place no lube needed just sits in there nice and snug i mean it, it went in smoothly but snap those back on and we're good to go so All right, now I gotta fill the tank with uh, diesel. I'm gonna go get another batch of this and make sure the tank's completely full. And then I'm gonna <clears throat> just let her sit and idle, see what happens. Fingers crossed. I'm gonna throw some sea foam in there. Never have before. Maybe it'll be dumb to do it, but no one told me to, I'm just gonna do it. <laughs> All right, so we've got about 17 gallons of gas in there with the sea foam. I don't see any leaks in all the lines I put back together. Check under here, see if anything's dripping. Nothing is leaking. That's good. Now the moment of truth. If I can get her started and then let her run for a while. Just lay in the snow. Oh, I forgot. After you do the fuel filter, you're supposed to um, charge the system for 30 seconds a pop. So I won't film all of that. 30 seconds with the key charging that way it's pumping fuel i believe back into the system and you do that six times so i'm going to do that now and i'll click this off you can hear it pumping hear that. <clears throat> 
So each of the charges, the first two charges, I've heard that pumping as it's pulling fuel back into the system. I'm guessing it won't do that on the next four, but that's what the mechanic on another video said to do. You can hear it pumping again. So I guess you just keep doing that over and over again. I'm gonna do it, this is the third time. I'll do it three more times off. Before camera. I, uh, after I charged it six times, and it seems to, it seems to pump for 30 seconds. It must be a, a computerized thing. And that's why he says to keep the key clicked over, not turning the car on, just clicked over for 30 seconds at a pop six times. I can't, I decided to come in here and double check, see if there's any fuel leaks. There's none, so I'm going to go ahead and start her. Double check underneath, nothing dripping. This is what it was doing the other day when I came out to start it. So my son had put this crap gas in, or the real gas in instead of diesel. Came home, and when I came out, the lights were on. That door was ajar, and it had been a day or two. So I thought the battery was dead, so I just kept cranking it. Then I let it sit here and idle for 40 minutes or something while I was working in the house, and then I drove it, just letting the battery charge. And then I discovered partway down the road, it was sputtering like crazy. Let's see if we can get our start. All right. So she has started. And I'm gonna let her just sit here and idle. And I'll come out and I'll watch it and check it, and make sure nothing spraying out. So it's a good sign it started and it's idling. And I'm just going to let it run for a while, maybe an hour. <laughs> and then I might go drive around. When this happened to my brother, he did this. And he said he had to drive around for a bit, a few miles. And then multiple people have told me since I posted on Facebook, this is what I was doing. 90,000 miles ago, I did the same thing you're doing to fix mine because a friend accidentally filled his whole tank himself with a straight gas. Drove 40 miles, trailered at home, did what I did, and he's been driving it for 90,000 miles. So hopefully... Fingers crossed the engine isn't messed up and we'll see. Okay, so it's been idling for an hour and uh, <clears throat> I can smell outside the truck. There's a little bit of that kind of burning smell. bit of a burning smell that isn't normal. You can smell it inside the cab here too. So that has me a little bit nervous. But it sounds, it sounds normal. It just has that bit of a smell and that might be left over from the other day, I don't know. But let's take it for a spin and see what happens. Check engine light is still on. We'll see if that stays on or if it pops off. I'm gonna turn this off while I go. All right. 
cars. Back down the driveway. Well, this is running much different than it did the other day. It was sputtering and chugging and like it was out of gas. You know, if you've ever run out of gas, it starts to sputter and chug a bit. I'm getting a lot of snow today. It's tough to see the edges of the road. And uh, as soon as I get out of our little community here, I'll see how it goes. But so far, so good, man. Pretty happy. Unless it damaged something internally that'll show up down the road. It's, it, it sounds fine and it seems to be running fine. I'll see if my little, if the turbo kicks in just outside of town here. Everybody's out snow blowing. problems with the turbo has all its get up and go no sputtering I'm gonna click this off so I can pay attention that I can barely see the edge of the road in normal view through the camera actually looks you can see the edge but I can't see it normally but it seems to be doing great So I stopped at the store, came back out after 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and it started up. It sputtered a little bit, but it started up fine. Um, so I don't hear any weird noises. I think I hear a slight hum that I didn't before, but I can't tell. Um, and I don't smell any weird odors anymore. It's kind of clearing out the cab after I drove four miles to town and four miles back. So. Seems to be running fine. I mean, we'll see in the days to come, especially if I get out on the highway. But yeah, I got it up to 50, gave that turbo a little bit of push to see if it would kick in. It did. So hopefully all is well. Check engine light's still on. I can't tell if I'm hearing a hum or if I'm trying to hear something and I've just never listened for it before. It's very faint, almost like somebody's running like a lawnmower out in the yard and you're in your cab. But again, I can't tell if I'm making that up in my head, but I think there is some type of like hum that wasn't there before. So. Otherwise, I am relieved at this point. <laughs> Hopefully it's good to go.